Chances are you didn't select this video to ask questions about the universe, rather to learn about electricity and rust. Throughout this video, I will explain the general flow of electricity, introduce each component, and common electricity uses. My goal is to make this easy, quick, and painless so you can get electricity up in your base in no time. Electricity works like this. During the day, you have the sunlight that produces energy. At nighttime, you have the wind that produces energy. To gather this energy, you need one of two things, a wind turbine or a large solar panel. The most common setup after this is to route it through your base via a splitter. When routing through the base, it's recommended to store the energy in either a small or large rechargeable battery, and then you continue the routing throughout the base with various items such as switches. All items in this tutorial can be crafted using a specific workbench, search for this in your craft bar, and a few items can be purchased at select monuments. First up is the wire tool. This is a default craftable blueprint. To use, left click on any electricity component to connect and hold right click to disconnect. The next two items are external components that gather electricity for your base. The first one we have is the large solar panel. This one is only active during the day cycle and is very sensitive to shadows. Make sure you put it in a spot where the shadows won't cast on it. If it has just the tiniest sliver of a shadow, it will prevent any electricity from going through the item. It has one output slot, and the maximum output for one large solar panel is 20 watts. Next up we have the wind turbine. Obviously this is the more powerful item in respect to gathering electricity because you can easily surpass 100 watts during a day or night cycle. The higher up you place this item, the more electricity you will gather with the wind. However, if you're building in certain areas, say in a temperate forest with not a lot of wind, or at the bottom of a rock formation, your night cycles may have lower output. It has one output slot and can be purchased at the bandit camp. Please note at the time of this video, the cost was 500 scrap. It's not to say that face punch would alter this in the future. Before moving inside of the base, I normally look for one of these guys, the root combiner. This is used to combine multiple energy sources and maximize your output by bridging them together. It has two input slots designated as root power one and root power two with one output slot. In this simple example, I'm going to bridge together my wind turbine and my solar panel. But note, having this beautiful component will allow you to stack multiple items. To use, simply connect your components to one of the root slots and connect the other one. As you can see, bridging them together totals 86 watts. If that's not enough electricity and you want to bridge more, all you have to do is craft more root combiners and stack them, like so. You can designate one root combiner for the solar panels, one root combiner for the wind turbines, and then you have the third root combiner, of which you connect one output from the two wind turbines and the other output from your two solar panels. The first component you should place inside your base is the splitter. This is used to route one energy source into multiple outputs. It has one input and three output slots. Note, when you use multiple slots, it will decrease your overall output. If you're only using one of them as a pass-through, you'll get 100%. If you use two, it'll split it to 50% per slot. And if you use all three, it'll split it to 33% in each slot. This is something that's very important when setting up electricity in your base to be available during the day and the night cycles but we'll discuss that later on when we go over the common uses of electricity. In the game, there are two different kinds of batteries. On the left, the small rechargeable battery, and on the right, the large rechargeable battery. These are required if you're trying to have a day and night electricity setup, and I've never used a small battery. The reason why, the maximum charge it holds is 15 minutes in-game. The large battery holds up to four hours in-game. So when you set your electricity up, if you let it run for, you know, a, a day IRL, you come back, your large battery is going to be maxed out and you're never going to have any issues. So generally I skip the small battery, but if you're having issues finding the large battery, there's nothing wrong with using a series of small batteries. Both of them have an input and an output. On the small battery, it's relatively easy to see the blue is the power in and the red is the power out. And depending on where you place the large battery, it can be hard to find the power in and out. So it's actually on the back, on the bottom, you can see the power in and on the top is the power out. The electrical branch is basically an extension cable used to extend electricity throughout your base. It has one input and two outputs, one called the branch out, the other called the power out. You probably wonder, like I did in the beginning, what exactly is the branch out? Basically, whenever you have electricity and want to use it for multiple purposes, you connect it to an electrical branch and use the branch out for one item, 
and then you use the power out for the other item. Or if you have a series of electrical branches, you use the power out to connect to another electrical branch. A common example would be having two ceiling lights, one switch, and one door controller. You have electricity coming in that you want to power the two ceiling lights, as well as the switch to the door controller so you can open and close the door at will. What you would do is branch out to your ceiling light, and then you would power out to your switch, and then you would connect your switch to the door controller. If you notice here, there's an option called Configure. If you press E, it'll bring you to this menu. The value defaults to 2. What this means is when you branch out to any other item, 2 watts are deducted from the total amount of electricity you're inputting. So, I'm an example, you're inputting 50 watts into your electrical branch, you select the branch out option and connect it to a ceiling light, 2 watts are deducted from the total electricity you have, making 48 watts available in your power out. If you're going to connect multiple items in your branch out, you're going to have to increase this number. It can increase to basically whatever you want. I mean, I think if you look, it's like free text here. If you ever get that much electricity, that would be absolutely insane. And I would actually love to see that. Feel free to post that in the Discord. But what you want to do is assess how many components you have and what the requirement would be for branching out. And make sure you pick a suitable number. So for me, if I'm picking, you know, two or three lights, I like to pick this as 10 just to give you a buffer of in case something happens and whatever, your electricity goes down, your lights don't power off and make it look like your base is haunted. The blocker is something I only use for my day and night electricity setup. It has one input, one block pass through, one output. I know other people use this for other purposes, but for me, I only care about one thing, making my electricity available during day and night. So what you do is make sure the power source that you're powering in and powering out is from your battery because you want that to flow through so when it switches over to the night cycle it picks up and automatically switches over to your battery let's move on to switches you've probably seen a variant of them throughout your wipe and wonder what the heck do they do and why do you need them i thought the same thing for the longest time especially with this one the end switch basically this one will route electricity throughout your base if both energy sources are active on the bottom left, you have input A, bottom right, you have input B, and you have a power out on the top. Now, for me, I normally don't use this because I don't require it. Normally, when I have my electricity flowing through, I go with the OR switch, and it'll power when one of my sources is active, not both of them. What I can tell you that is probably the most practical use for this one is using it in a trap base. If you've seen my pressure pad video, you've noticed that I stood on a pressure pad in the window and when people walked in my base, I stepped off of it and the door closed. This one, I toyed around with it to modify. Instead of having the pressure pad, I had a heartbeat sensor and a laser detector, both hooked up to an ant switch, hooked up to that door controller. So then when I would back up, only one of the power sources are active and the door would close. You can come up with other uses for this, but again, for me, I don't really use it. I was just only toying around with the trap base and I get most of my benefit out of the OR switch. Here's the OR switch. This is used to route electricity throughout your base and will work if one of your energy sources are active. Like the AND switch, on the bottom left you have input A, bottom right you have input B, and you have a power out. So anytime I use electricity, this is like the number one thing. I mean, I, I really like the root combiner. I really like the splitter, but whenever I find the OR switch, I just tuck it away because I know I'm going to need it later and I'll blueprint it, you know, relatively quickly. The great thing about this is you can have two power sources going in and both of them have power. That's great. It'll overtake the most powerful one. So for an example, if I have a wind turbine coming in with 100 watts and I have a large battery coming in with 50 watts, I'm not losing any power on my large battery. It's still, you know, maintaining its charge or whatever the wind turbine would overtake it with 100 watts. Then when it decreases the night, say the wind turbine goes down to 50 and my large battery goes up to 75, it'll take my large battery's watts and it will use it for that. Very similar to the OR switch, you have the XOR switch. It routes electricity throughout the base. It will only work if one of the energy sources is active. It does have an input A and input B, similar to the OR switch, and it has a power out. This one you would think because it has OR in the title, it's relatively similar to the other one, which is true, it is. Even though you can take in two energy inputs, it will only work if one of them is active. The only use I've had with this is having two switches hooked up to doors, basically. So if anyone has seen the stream from before when I was playing with Brian, Fratty, Zoe, and Aromatic Beast, Brian wanted me to hook up electricity to have two switches 
that would close the loot room doors or open the loot room doors. So I had one switch plugged into input A, the other switch plugged into input B, and then depending on where I was in the, the base, I could flip a switch and it would open and close doors. But if I had both of the switches turned on, the doors would automatically close because the, the power would be cut off. If you basically want to use two power sources and take the higher power to flow through, I would recommend using your ore switch. But if you want to make something really cool and you have a multi-level base and you want to have multiple switches hooked up to one common function, like turn on lights, open doors, open traps, or whatever, you can use the XOR switch and I'll show you later on how to do that. Moving on to the fun stuff. Here we have the door controller. Basically, whatever it's paired to, whether it's some kind of door in a regular door frame, an external gate, or a garage door, this is used to basically open up and close the door. You have one input on the bottom that you have your electricity going in. There's many things you can hook up to this, like a heartbeat sensor, a switch, a pressure pad, a laser detector, and that's, well, I mean, that's, I guess that's pretty much it. But when the power source is activated, that will trigger the door to be open. So, you know, the, the biggest thing is what you, when you put it down, you have to make sure whatever you're trying to connect it to is unlocked. So in this scenario, I have a wooden door with a code lock that is locked. I hold E to pair to the door. It doesn't work. What you have to do is unlock it. I see this all the time. I've actually seen people comment in my other YouTube video of Bangles. This doesn't work when you're trying to pair it to a gate. Well, if you already have a lock on it, all you have to do is just go unlock it, put the door controller down, hold E to pair, the light will turn green and then you can lock it again. The most common use for this, as you can see in YouTube, is for trap bases. People walk into a door that's open, they're looking around the loot, you're on the other side of the glass, flipping the switch to close the door, and then you're on your way to your next YouTube viral video. A very basic and important item for your base is the ceiling light. This is used as a light inside or outside of your base, depending on where you wanna put it. It has one input and one pass-through slot, and also can be purchased at the outpost for 15 scrap. That's the cost at the time of this video. Note that face punch may change this in the future. Though I like this item, there is a downside to it. Unfortunately, when you put it up, it generally covers mostly one square. It'll give a little bit of light off in other areas of your base, but you normally have to put up a lot of them so your base is well lit. To connect, all you have to do is take your electricity setup, whether it's just your external power source, or your sophisticated setup and put it into the power in. As you can see, you look at the nighttime, it mostly covers one square. And you look at it around, it kind of gives off a little bit of a glow. I kind of wish they had the other light, which is the, I forget what it's called, it's like the more, the cooler light that you see in the, the modded videos. But unfortunately, this only gives off a limited amount of light. Now, one thing I will say, because I've learned this from over time from doing electricity, Instead of hooking up multiple electrical branches to connect your lights, what you want to do when you have your power in from here, you can use the pass-through to connect it to other lights so you don't have to add that electricity debt of just having a wall of a million different electrical branches. You can have one branch out going to your ceiling light, and then once you have that, you can pass through to other ceiling lights to make your setup more efficient. Because these are also lights, I'm going to attack them at the same time. On the left we have the flasher light, on the right we have the siren light. The flasher light is a blue pulsating light for role playing or raising awareness in the base. And the siren light is a constant red light moving around in a circular motion. Both of them have one input and one pass through slot. Just like the ceiling light, you can connect your external power source or your sophisticated setup to the power in, and you can use the pass through to go to the other item for an efficient setup. Here we have a switch which is used as a uh, switch. Basically you put power in and you flip a switch to activate some kind of purpose and literally the opportunities are endless. It has one input, one output. This one, the most commonly used thing is for opening doors. So in this example here I have my windmill behind hooked up to the switch. I have the switch hooked up to a door controller. When you flip it, the door opens. Huzzah! This next component is pretty much my first love which got me into electricity. I read about the update and I was trying to think of something cool and I came across the pressure pad. This activates electricity by stepping on the item which also makes a clicking noise that's audible to you and the player. It has one input, one output, 
If you've seen my trap base with the pressure pads under the rugs, you can still hide it. It just takes a little bit more time to set up. It's more finicky. I think they realized they screwed up by making this OP to be hidden. So just, you know, work with it. I know you can do it. Don't get frustrated. It'll work out. But basically, you can use this to do anything. The common setup would be you walk on the pressure pad and it opens up a door. Or if you want to have a trap base where you're standing on the pressure pad and they walk in, and they kill you, the pressure pad loses power and now they're sealed in. Moving on, this item activates electricity based on player movement nearby. Whether it's the players authorized on the TC, players not authorized on the TC, or everyone. The setting can be changed by using your hammer. It has one input, one output, can be hidden above garage doors as seen in my trap base video. I personally think it's cool and an innovative component they added to the game. Now, as you can see when I walk by, it's relatively sensitive, so it's got a pretty large radius to trigger. So if you see how far back I am, and if you accidentally walk up here, it'll trigger it, and even though it doesn't look like you're that close, it picks you up, and, you know, it'll set off whatever you have planned. So, the most important thing is to understand what you're using this for. If you want to use it for traps, and you don't want yourself to trigger it, you have to change this to exclude those authorized on the TC of the base. To change the setting, equip your hammer, hold E on it, and then you have two options, exclude authorized or exclude others. When you select exclude authorized, the power will no longer be active because it's not recognizing on you. It's only on people that do not have TC access. For example, I'm deauthorized, and now when I walk up to it, it triggers. If you want it to be vice versa, if it's something that you're using not for a trap, but more for a convenience, if you create a room where you want doors to open when it recognizes you for a quick drop because you have to go back outside, you want to only have this authorized for people on the TC. So what you would do, you would include authorized and you would exclude others so that people don't raid your base and then they walk up and realize a door opens in free loot without using any kind of explosives. Last, but certainly not least, is the laser detector. When it has power, it activates whatever you basically have set up when the player walks through it. Unlike the heartbeat sensor, this accounts for all players, so whether or not you have TC on a base, this will activate whenever you trip the laser. It has one input and one output slot, can be hidden behind small boxes or sleeping bags. People use this for triggering lights or doors. So I have this hooked up to a door controller, I walk, door opens. Note, when you're standing in the laser, whatever you've activated will stay activated. When you step off of it, it will deactivate. Now that we've covered all of the components, let's talk about some common uses with electricity. So the first common use we're going to go over is setting up lights and electricity to be used during the day and the night cycles. So like I mentioned earlier, we're going to bridge these external power sources into the root combiners and connect them to our splitter. Now that everything's connected, you can see on the far left, I have two wind turbines hooked up to the one root combiner. In the middle, I have both of my solar panels hooked up. And then on the right, I have the root combiner on the left and the root combiner in the middle plugged in to have a total output of 213 watts. Once I have the power into my splitter, on the first slot, connect it to an electrical branch on the input. On the branch out, connect it to your block pass-through on the blocker. On the power out, connect it to your power input of your large battery. Once that's connected, if you hold your wire tool over it, you can notice the charge left is increasing. What this means is your external power source you have hooked up is charging your battery. So the way that this setup's going to work is during the day, it's going to leverage the electricity generated from the outside, and it's going to charge your battery. And then once it flips over to the night cycle, it's going to rely on your battery to switch over automatically. So do the power out to the blocker and then from the power out of the blocker go to your or switch once that's hooked up pick any slot whether it's two or three it doesn't matter from the splitter connect it to your or switch you can see here this power is being blocked through the blocker even though your battery is hooked up to this you're not really getting much energy because right here you're getting 90 from the outside and from here you're getting less than 90. Even though it shows zero, it's a glitch, you're getting less. So currently during the day, it's going to use the outside. Now, the first thing we could do, we can set up for, you know, a complex thing here. 
I'm going to start off with some lights that I'm going to do a door controller setup. So the first thing you want to do is put one electrical branch down and branch out to your ceiling lights. And you notice here your power that you have is 76. So you're going to have to account for that, you know, during the time and you can see how much it's going to cost. You have 10 lights, which roughly will take 20 watts. So to be on the safe side, if you change this to 22 and set, you'll be good to go. On the first ceiling light, click the pass through and just connect them in any order that you so choose. And there we go. We have a lot of lights. We have 10 of them. It's very bright in here. And when it goes to the night cycle, as you can see here, it's well lit and you're pretty excited that you have electricity in your base. Now let's say you want to take your electricity a step further. Now that you have all of your lights here, what you have to do is look at your power out and see how much energy you have to work with. In this case, we have 59 and it's dropping fast. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have enough to power all of these, but we're going to try it anyway. So what we're going to do, we're going to put up six garage doors and we're going to hook them up to one switch and the one switch will open all of them and close all of them at the same time. To do this, you're going to need six garage doors, six door controllers and one switch. With each door controller, place it on the door frame next to the garage door. Make sure it's unlocked. I don't have the locks on here currently and I'm not going to for this example, but just make sure they're all unlocked. Hold E to pair. Now that all of the door controllers are paired, put your switch on the wall and connect the electricity to that and connect it to each one. Now, if only it were that simple, you could just do the output of your switch and then pass through your door controllers. But as you can see, the door controllers only have a power in. So what you're going to have to do is use multiple electrical branches to run it through that you basically connect your switch to that and then you run the electrical branches to each door. So the first thing you do is go to your power out and connect it to your switch on the bottom. And then assess how many you're going to need. So even though we have six doors, you're going to need five electrical branches because you're going to branch out five times. And on the final door, you're going to do the power out. On the very first one on the power end, you're going to connect it to the power out of your switch. Now the switch is connected. You do your branch out to your first door controller. We'll start with the left side. And then the power out, you're going to connect it to the power end of the next electrical branch. You basically repeat this step by branching out to all the door controllers until you get to the last one. And then you power out to the last door controller. Okay, you notice here they're all off. It's because the switch is turned off. Let's demonstrate and see if this works. Fingers crossed. Awesome. So now I flip the switch, all my doors open. Now I don't have to go through every single door and open it. This is great. But as you can imagine, when people come in and raid your base, if you have this still hooked up, even if it's turned off, they can come here, flip the switch and open up all of your loot boxes. So just keep that in mind that if you want to have a switch, put it in a strategic spot of your base where people can't find it. Or if you want to be safe, just unhook the input on the bottom to make it deactivated. So when you log off, people can't come in, flip the switch and basically have access to your base. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much all that I have. This is uh, one of my favorite things to do. In my opinion, the best way to learn about electricity is to write something down you're interested in that you want to try to solve with electricity. Learn about the items by watching tutorials like this and go out and do it. It's a lot of fun and it's very satisfying when, you know, what you're trying to do happens like me when I was trying to use the pressure pad for something cool and it turned out I created a trap base and it was a lot of fun. So thanks again, everybody for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If this was helpful to you, 
please remember to drop a like, hit the subscribe button with the bell, and put some comments down there. If you made it this far, tell me your favorite Burger King dessert item, you know, that you that you like there. I don't really like Burger King, but I'm just curious. And I'm open to doing electricity videos in the future. I read the comments, so if there's something that you're trying to get working and it's not really working for you, and you need some assistance or you'd like to see me give it a shot, just include it in the comments below or even in my Discord, and I'm more than happy to try that for you. Thanks again, everybody. I'll see you later. Whee!